The end. Known to be the most dangerous dimension in Minecraft, with only the void below, and a lot of mobs above, and countless other ways to die, it grew in a player's hardcore world in a matter of seconds. Which is why I'm gonna turn it into a 100% safe base, so I never have to worry about dying ever again. But first, I have to remove the entire end island. My plan is to use TNT flying machines, since they'll just destroy the island from above, since they do TNT. But for that, we're gonna need a lot of slime. So we got built to level 192, build our AFK platform, and we're pretty much done. And after just only an hour AFKing, we have nearly a full double chest of slimes. Uh, excuse you, now that we have all of our slime here, we can start working on the actual TNT duper. And that is our one TNT duper built. I'm joking, I've made eight of these already. Theoretically, if I flick this lever, it should go forward. That is a good sign. Now we gotta do it for every single one of these. So the only thing left to do now is just wait and let it destroy all the way till the void. And as you can see, I'm having to move the flying machines because of the obsidian pillars, which lucky for you guys, you don't have to watch through. Okay, so now that we're pretty much done with the outside areas of the end island, we have to do the center area. Now I've already set up three TNT dupers, but we still have to add way more. Oh my God, dude. Look at all the TNT just raining down. Oh, that's... Um, I think that's fine. The airman doesn't seem to be bothering. So you know what? Whatever. So I think the idea is for all these chunky areas is to place TNT there and explode most of it. And then I could go through the rest with my pickaxe and just start mining it. Now, I do have a lot of gunpowder from the creeper farm I built for my fireworks. So we could just use that to make the TNT. And now that we have the TNT place, we can ignite it. I don't have flint and steel. Okay. Ooh, a lot of them are mad at me. But the TNT strat is pretty pretty good but for right now i want to focus on the scattered blocks that's gonna take the longest at least for me it will but lucky for you guys editing makes things way easier this took two hours but i mean look at this it, 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 there's just nothing admittedly there is not that much left that we need to do so my plan is to probably just blow up big sections with tnt and mine the rest by hand and that is our final pillar and with the end island completely removed we can start working on the actual build now the outside ring is going to be made with concrete and glass now sadly glass farms don't exist but what does exist is sand dupers so we're going to build that instead and for the stupor we're going to need a lot of beehives to make honey all right that should be enough beehives and now that we have all the materials we can start building our sand duper but in order to do that we do need to find another end portal that's different from the one we already have because the way we use the sand duper is by actually breaking the portal now before we do anything we have to clear out this area because the farm does take quite a bit of space so if we get our dirt here our bone mill and our four red mushrooms place our red mushroom here and this should Break the portal. Look at that. That's so weird. Look at that. We have broken every single portal frame. This this doesn't look right. All right. So that's schematic place. We could finally start working on this build. Now with the sand duper finished, we need to build the collection system in the end. Make sure our spawn point is set. All right. Let's get our elytra on because we're going to need it. We are going to have to kill all these endermen, which should be too hard. But yeah, after that, we could finally build the collection system. So now we turn the chunk loader on. Turn the duper on. Hopefully it works. Uh-oh. Bro, oh my Really? That was it? Oh my god Turns out, this farm only works in a certain direction I don't get it, but it's working, so I'm not gonna question it And after about 30 minutes, I think this is definitely enough sand Oh my goodness And obviously if you could tell, I had to expand the storage farm Because I was just getting so much sand that it was overflowing And for that high quality sand farm, this is how I'm smelting my glass I mean, I'll be honest, if I just AFK overnight, I should get all the glass I need So I did say AFK overnight, but it may or may not have been 20 hours But as you guys can see, I have all the glass I need for this build Another useful thing about sand dupers is that they can also be used to dupe concrete powder so so we'll just need to get some white tulips for the dye and the fuck mojang i ain't no game dev but i'm pretty sure if you have a white tulip it should make white dye am i crazy but thankfully we could get bone blocks from the nether which we turn into bone meal which we could then turn into actual white dye there we go now that's white dye let's get our sand and let's get our gravel and let's start making some white concrete
And as you guys can see here, we have plenty of white concrete powder. We actually have more than enough. And surprisingly, it didn't take as long as you would think. The only thing we need to do now is turn this from concrete powder to actual concrete, which is really easy with a simple farm. Now, admittedly, the only downside to this is that it does lower my pickaxe durability. But then again, I could just mend it using XP from villagers, so it's not that big of a deal. And just like that, we have plenty of white concrete to make this build. The way we're going to set up this build is basically using a schematic mod. It lets us basically see the whole structure of the build like a hologram, which is going to make building this outer ring a lot easier to do. And without having to restock on our white concrete, we have finished the outer ring of our base. I mean, look at this thing. This thing is gigantic. I will say it is a bit of a problem that endermen are spawning on here, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. I think the next best thing right now is to go in and just build the layout of the actual base so it makes things a little easier. And with that, we have the layout of the build finally done. But there is a problem. If you see all these circles laid out where the obsidian pillars are, that's where I'm going to be building the statues, which means I'm going to have to mine a lot of obsidian. Oh, pickaxe, you've been through so much. And that is half the towers complete. As you can see, I've removed all the outer layers of the obsidian so that we can have our white concrete pillars here. And then I've also removed the height of most of them. And after I remove all the obsidian, all I have to do is remove these bedrock blocks. Now, for some of you that are confused as to why I didn't destroy the entire obsidian pillar, it's because the concrete towers I'm going to build basically act as a shell, covering the obsidian, which saves me a lot of time from having to remove every obsidian block. But also just the sheer amount of obsidian I've collected from this is crazy. And after a couple of hours, we finally cut down the size of every obsidian tower that we need to. But after all that mining, I have almost five full shulkers full of obsidian. But we're not done yet, since I still need to break the bedrock on each of the pillars. Okay, with everything deconstructed, we can finally... Excuse you. All right, with everything said, we can finally continue working on our build. Since we still have a lot of white concrete left over, we are going to use it to finish the outside border. Surprisingly enough, it didn't take that long, but we have both of our outer rings completely finished. With the walls though, we can finally start using the glass I smelted earlier. The plan is that there's going to be eight different glass colors, one color representing each part of the base. This time, we should be able to use the flowers to get the color that we want. And for the rest of the dyes, we could just craft them. And with that, we have finally gotten the final color of our glass. We have orange, yellow, red, blue, light blue, purple, magenta, and lime, which is all the colored glass we need for the outer ring. Now, it doesn't really matter where we start with the red, so I think I'm I'm just gonna have it right here on the closest side to where we spawn. Not gonna lie, this dome shape is pretty cool to look at. Next, we'll go ahead and do the color orange because, you know, the color of the rainbow and all that. With the orange finally complete, we can go ahead and just go around the ring with every color we need to and get this done fairly fast. All right, I believe that is the final color done. Now, granted, it does look a little weird without the connecting block. But if I were to turn on my schematic, you could see that there's going to be tubes connecting in between each color. And all this is just different colored concrete blocks that I could just get with my concrete duper. So that's what we're going to do next. And after more AFKing, we finally have enough concrete to build this outer ring. So we're going to go ahead and finish that. Uh, it turns out we actually needed a uh, gray concrete. But black concrete's like close enough. I don't really feel like AFKing more. Let's see, how's that look? Oh, that looks fine. Black is fine, we didn't need dark gray. All right, with the final black concrete there, let's see how this looks. Okay, yeah, that, that looks perfectly fine. The only thing let's do now is that the white, light blue, and normal blue concrete. All right, well, with all the materials that could fit in my shulker, I've done pretty much half of the ring, and it actually looks really good, aside from, you know, all the endermen everywhere that's constantly trying to kill me. But it's currently 2 a.m., and I've been on this world for, like, over eight hours. I'm gonna go to bed. Okay, let's finish this. I just woke up. Is this the last one? Oh my god, it is. Alright, perfect. And with this final white concrete block, we have finished this entire ring. I mean, look at that. Does that not look sick? So what we need to do now is we need to map out the zone area where the end island will be in the middle. And this time, I finally got gray concrete. I'm going to use it to build our border around the middle. Now, obviously, from this outer ring to this inner ring, there's just a big void gap, which is not safe at all. So what we're going to do is that since I have a slime farm, we're going to fill this whole gap in with slime blocks. And it's going to go all around the ring. That does mean more AFKing, which is only a problem for me. But for you guys... All right, come on. That transition was so much better. But either way, not only do we have the slime blocks from the shulker, we have a lot more in these chests as well. So hopefully this is enough. I can feel the amount of pain I'm going to have to deal with editing this. 
All right, and that's the final slime block. That is the entire ring. So let's say I were to accidentally forget to put my elytra on. I'd be just fine. Okay, uh, we're not gonna do that again though. But other than that, I believe we could finally work on the pillars of the base. It's gonna consist of the same palette that we used on the outer ring, so we should need to get more materials for it. With the first tower done, we only have to do this nine more times. Thrilling. All right, all right, that is six of the towers done. We all we need to do is four more. This actually takes a lot more materials than I thought it would. All right, with the pillars finally complete, all we have to do now for the exterior is build the middle, which I plan to do a little end island because granted, well, we kind of got rid of the end island entirely. So I feel like we should add something in honor of it. Now, with all the endstone placed, you can see that there are still little holes here. That's because we're going to place mini obsidian pillars similar to how the original end island looked. Okay, that looks pretty good. All you have to do now is figure out how high each pillar should be. Okay. Man, do I need totems? Okay, and I believe with that, we have finished the entire exterior. Uh, obviously, I still need to add the end crystals on top of all these, but that shouldn't be too hard. Okay, look at that. We have a mini island with our base surrounding it. Why are you mad at me? And now after a long time, we can focus on the interior of our base because we just have so much room to work with here. And just like the exterior, our first room is going to be the red one. This is going to be our lounge slash entrance area. Since our spawn platform is right there, I'm going to build a platform out here so I can easily fly my elytra right to it without worrying about falling into the void. As I said earlier, the entrance is going to be a sort of lounge area. So my plan is to have benches in the corner and a little map in the middle and to have an aquarium that goes all way over the entrance and we'll put a mixture of sand and gravel here all right now we have the basic layout of the aquarium set up we still need to add the actual fish and decorations and the lights which will be sea lanterns but we're gonna wait to do that until we finish everything else here in the room which is the benches in the corners next the map in the center and since there's some extra space why not add a patio all right with the basic area of our layout finished we can now focus on the more finer details and one of those is getting sea lanterns which does require us to go to the ocean monument now i do believe there is an ocean monument right here because i know it was near my creeper farm yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, collecting all these materials. Don't mind me. So if we get our supplies here, so we're going to place the two bucket of cod in here. And then we'll go in and add some fans. And for the puffer fish, we're actually going to name it. Whatever the top comment for the name of this puffer fish is, I will name it that. And you guys might as well subscribe if you're down there. But for right now, we're just going to keep them in here. Next thing on the list here is to add the empty map. Okay, and I believe if I go right in the center here, Perfect. Okay, so now if we place these here, and with that, we are pretty much done with the first room besides this pathway, but we'll just do that real quick. And now we can focus on our next room. I also went ahead and made an XP farm, if you couldn't tell by my levels, but now I don't have to worry about my pickaxe breaking. And then I finally added the tunnels in between the outer ring and the center, which is basically a quicker form of traveling from one end of the base to the other. And this tunnel is going to lead over to our second room, which is going to be our villager <laughs> training hall. Now, obviously, we need to build the layout of the room first, and then we can add the villager stations. So with that being done, we can work on our stations where each of the villagers will be. And each station will be separated into four sections, with each of them them having different jobs all right and i think that's the first station done all i need to do is make four more of these stations and we should be good all right now with every station complete we get to do my favorite part getting all the villagers here we are going to need 16 total which will take some time to do okay one more villager and conveniently they're in the most difficult spot zero zero survival rate oh my these villagers are giving me the most insane anxiety come on we have finally finished getting all the villagers we need for our trading post and with the first two stations done we can move on to the third one which is going to be a museum which unlike regular museums is going to be a lot cooler than you think and so let's create the panels where all the items were going to go and now that the first floor is done, I can finally tell you what this museum is going to be for. Each case is going to be for its own video. So for example, since it's making an end base, we're going to go ahead and put the dragon egg in this first slot. And that is our first artifact in our museum. Now granted, there are only nine slots in the first floor. We're going to build some more slots on the second floor. Okay, we have added 12 more slots to the roof. So in total, that should be 21 slots available. So uh, let's hope I don't die before that. Thankfully, the next room is green, which is going to be our farms. And I'm really happy about it because we could finally trade with our villagers to get some emeralds. Now with the floor laid out, we can add our farm. The bigger section on these two sides is going to be for sugarcane, while the smaller two sides will be for another ward. 
And that is the first floor finished. Because since the walls are high enough, we have enough room to add a potato, carrot, and wheat farm. Alright, so I finished dividing the top into three sections. And I feel like for the longer plots of land, we'll do carrots and potatoes. And for the middle one, we'll do wheat, since we don't use it that much. Okay, and we have finally finished placing all of our potatoes. Honestly, the only thing left to do now for this area is add our storage system. And then, of course, we'll add a label for all the items. And something cool I want to add is, instead of having this pillar right here, we're actually going to make a little smoker tower. So if we wanted to cook anything, we could easily access it right here. But after a lot of grinding, we are actually 50% done with the interior of our base. And with all these four stages finished, that knocks off some of the ways that we could have died in the end, making this base safer and safer. But of course, we're still only 50% done. We still have four more stations we still need to build. With the light blue area being the garden. Now, the reason for all the water is because I basically want to make a gazebo in the middle with a pond surrounding it and then obviously a lot of plants on the side but for that we are gonna need a lot of nature blocks all right so even though they're separated into different shulkers we should have everything we need for our garden we'll first set up the layout of where the gazebo is gonna be and now we can add the path, which we're kind of going to do in a bit of a sporadic design. Now, the reason that this corner is empty is because we're actually going to add a well here for our garden. And now we can go ahead and add the flowers on the grass plots because we have a lot to choose from. Now, I do admit the room does look a little empty. So I feel like if we add a design to the walls, it'll make it look way better. Even adding these little sections right here with the lanterns just makes it light up so much more. But obviously, we still need to build the main centerpiece right here, which is going to be the gazebo. Okay, let's see how this looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. We got to let it go down a bit more. There we go. Okay, now this is looking pretty good. The next thing we'll add is a patio on the second floor of this garden. And we have finally finished the second floor. Now, granted, it definitely isn't that much, but it, it's all right. But the final thing that brings this all together is a spore blossom. Purely because whenever you place it, it adds these cool dripping particles that, as you can see, float around the entire room. And with that, we have finished one of my favorite rooms, the garden. Now, you can imagine at this point in time, my chokers are full of a bunch of different stuff, which is why, thankfully, the next room is our storage room. Now, compared to other rooms, this is a fairly simple room since there's not much to add other than chests. But nevertheless, it is still a very important one. Now, since the plan is to have the chest on the edges of the room, I believe we should have the crafting and smelting area right in the middle of it. And with that done, we can start placing the chests down. Next, we'll go ahead and add the item frames to each of the chests, even though I'll probably give up on sorting it within the first week. All right, and we have our storage system fully set up. I can't tell you when the last time I saw an empty shulker box before. I think what we'll do now is add some final touches to this room just to make it look really nice. And that is our storage room complete. And like I said, it's very simple, which is honestly all we need in the storage system. Now, something every good base has is an enchant room. So we're going to do that, but I'm going to build the room in the form of a library, which is going to take a lot of wood. And if you guys think this is a lot of wood, I still need to add 158 bookshelves. I mean, it is a library, but that's still a lot of bookshelves and as you guys can see we have a lot of bookshelves here and then i've also set it up to where we have these chiseled bookshelves so that we could store certain enchant books in each row just to have a nice bit of storage now the library is looking really good but it does feel a little bit empty all we're gonna do now though is add some final touches to the library to make it look a little bit better okay and that is the library complete and with that we only have one final room left which is going to be our armory room this is where i'll have all my potions and extra spare gear sets just in case i were to lose any of my other ones and with our new storage system we should be able to find all the materials we need and as per usual we'll have our crafting table in the center of the room all right that's looking pretty good and now we can add the stations for each of our brewing stands i also went ahead and added a little nether wart farm on each side just because it looked really nice but you may be wondering this is called an armory room i'm seeing a lack of armor if you guys see on the edge where all these quartz pillars are that's where we're gonna have our armor set so we are gonna have to mine for some more diamonds and a good amount of ancient debris now, there's actually a really easy way that we could mine netherite. Initially, we would probably either use beds or tunnel bore it, but a new way that Gizmo found is that if we were to actually make fire res potions and we craft ourselves a lot of fireworks and then finally apply this resource pack, we could find agent debris a lot faster. And in just about 10 minutes, we have 40 ancient debris, which is just actually insane. And thankfully, I got a lot of diamonds, so we should be able to get more smithing templates. Go ahead and craft our netherite ingots. Go ahead and turn these into netherite armor. 
And there we have it. On both sides is our netherite armor sets. But something really cool you could do with these armor stands is that if we were to put a piston right here and add a glass block and then activate it, as you can see, we now have a glass cage around our armor, which is really cool. So we're going to go ahead and do that for every armor set. And with that, we have finally finished every single room of our base. But there's still one thing we need to address. If you guys haven't noticed already, Endermen have been constantly harassing me throughout this entire video. And so we're going to simply add lights around the entire base to make sure that doesn't happen. And after over 500 days, my end base is finally complete. I mean, just look at this. I have practically everything I'll ever need here in the end. And now I no longer have to worry about dying.